now we'll commence today's webinar. Um, a very good evening to all the panelists and attendees. I'm Kushi Javeri from Kyo University. And today we are here for the Global Network Project of University of Tokyo India Office. This project aims to attract students, primarily from South Asia, to encourage students to pursue their further studies in Japan. In today's webinar, we have been joined, joined by a couple of renowned universities in Japan. Each of these universities will give us a 20 minute presentation about their programs offered at undergraduate, graduate and doctoral levels, followed by a five minute Q&A session. Students are free to ask questions to our panelists in the Q&A box and not the chat box. Once again, please make sure to ask your questions in the Q&A box. Panelists, please make sure to turn off your video and audio when not presenting. Now I'll be sharing the agenda of today's webinar. So today we'll commence the webinar by a brief introduction by Ms. Sakshi, the program assistant of U-Tokyo India office. Then we'll have a presentation by Mr. Dheeraj from University of Tokyo for the overview of study and work life in Japan followed by a presentation by Tohoku University by Professor Watanabe from the Global Learning Center and Professor Ying Chen from the Graduate School of Engineering. They will have a presentation by Hitsumeikan Asia Pacific University by Ms. Dipti Singh, the India representative of the university. And lastly, we'll have a presentation by Shimana University by Professor Catherine Simpson from the International Set Center. Now I'd like to request a Ms. Sakshi to commence today's webinar by a brief introduction. Uh, thank you, Ms. Kushi. Uh, I hope I'm audible clearly. Yes, you're audible. Yeah, thank you. So hello everybody. Welcome to this webinar, Study and Work in Japan session A. Uh, thank you for taking time to join us today. We have a lot of useful information to share with you. My name is Sakshi Roy and I'm the program assistant here with the University of Tokyo India office. So today is the eighth day and we are presenting study and work in Japan session eight to you, which is hosted by the University of Tokyo India office and is sponsored by the MEX, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology in Japan. Through all these sessions, our mission is to introduce Japanese universities to you and to assist you to study and work in Japan. So being a part of uh, study in Japan global network project in Southwest Asia by MEXT, we provide comprehensive information on Japanese universities. We organize education fairs and seminars throughout India, and we manage these committees for a coordinator for study in Japan as well. So this is a little bit of information on what we do and about our mission. Now I'll tell you, why should you join all our online sessions? First of all, uh, from our online sessions, you will get to know about why should you study in Japan? Why should you work in Japan? And why should you choose Japan as your dream education destination? You'll get to know about all the programs that are offered in English by prestigious and well-known Japanese universities. And the most important, interesting, important and interesting part is your queries will be directly answered by university representatives. So there will be uh, three different Japanese universities representing in each session, national, public, and private universities. So please keep in mind that here, all the universities are basically focusing on English-based program that are offered by them. You do not need to worry about the Japanese language requirement. So lastly, I know uh, 20 minutes presentation is very short time to understand about the university. But it's okay if your question hasn't been answered during the session, I request all our attendees to please note down the contact addresses of respective universities, and then uh, you can ask them directly uh, later on by writing them. So yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's session. And please don't forget to register for our future webinars uh, in July till August, every Friday and Saturday. Uh, I hope it will help you to consider studies in Japan, seizing the opportunity to build an even brighter and more fulfilling future. Thank you very much. Over to you, uh, Kushi san. Thank you, Ms. Sakshi, so much for the introduction. I'll be sharing the agenda once again. Now I'd like to request Mr. Dheeraj from University of Tokyo to give us uh, to give our students an insight into the study and work life in Japan. 
Over to you, Mr. Biraj. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Kashi. Is my screen visible? Yes, it is. Okay. So hello everyone. I am Dheeraj Joshi. I am master's second year student in the Department of Civil Engineering at the University of Tokyo. I am basically come to Japan as part of high-speed rail agreement between the government of India and the government of Japan. So why are we just talking about why Japan is a rising magnet for the foreign talents to study and work in Japan? So as you can see, Japan has basically 47 prefectures and has a population of 126 million and is the third largest economy in the world. And it is a member of G7 countries. And besides, it is one of the most peaceful countries as enumerated in the Global Peace Index of 2020. And uh, Japan, besides, is a major global hub of major industries in automobiles, electronics, and robotics. And as you can see, uh, the international students, those who are coming here, they have real peace of mind, especially for international students, as Japan provides a very comfortable living environment uh, when they leave their home country. As you can see, the transportation is always on time. The bullet trains, uh, the Shinkansen, as they are popularly called here in Japan, are a technological marvel, basically. And uh, not only Shinkansen, uh, you can see, uh, basically, uh, the transport modes, other transport modes like buses and other local trains, they are also very punctual and on time. And basically, Japan provides a very excellent international cuisine options like Indian, Thai, and uh, Chinese and European. The main concern of students and parents after coming to Japan is the health of their child. And basically, Japan, the national health insurance systems, take care of all such apprehensions of the students as they have, uh, they cover around 70% of the medical expenses in lieu of around 12,000 minimum uh, charges per year. So Japan uh, as a country not only offers modern city landscape, but also coexisting with ancient culture heritage. So Japanese university system can be divided into three, national, public, and private. The other concern of the students is basically whether uh, there are English uh, language courses or not. As you can see, there are 90 undergraduate courses in 40 universities uh, in English, and graduate courses are around 160 in 51 universities, besides offering uh, doctoral and postdoctoral courses. So the facilities offered to the students are unparalleled and the best in the world. Basically, there are sophisticated libraries, which are having excellent collections of books and journals, including digital resources like e-journals and e-books, uh, the research labs have very unique uh, concepts in Japan where students learn practical skills through engineered approach and positive feedbacks from all the members of the lab, including Sensei. The student launch are uh, basically uh, for active discussions and active in interactions for creation of new ideas, besides providing a well-balanced life in, through sports facility. And also in university dormitory, there are excellent facilities for the peaceful and well-balanced lifestyle. So the Japanese universities also provide some uh, financial assistance through the form of various scholarships, which I'll be posting in the chat box later on. You can just compare the tuition fees of public and private universities in Japan and US. Basically, the public tuition fees is uh, around uh, three times lower than five times lower than uh, that, that offered in US. Besides the tuition fees in private universities, is around three times lower. And you can have the same living expenses as you can experience in US at the same cost. So the, what are the job opportunities after your graduation? The average salary after graduation is around 3.9 million yen, which is around 28 lakhs in Indian national rupees. And uh, the unemployment rate in Japan is the lowest, around 2.34%. Besides, you can have some leading international Japanese companies like Toyota, Panasonic, Nissan, Mitsubishi, which are offering excellent internship and part-time and long-term employment opportunities to their students. One thing I would like to highlight here that the visa procurement process is very easy. The students after graduation can upgrade the student visa to working visa in Japan, as there is a point-based system for highly skilled professionals here. So why you wish to come to Japan? 
basically it has excellent level of higher educational and english uh, courses the japan is a world leader in science and technology it has low tuition fees compared to the best universities in us and europe besides there are generous scholarship programs and there are many japanese companies to recruit uh, for and there are various upper avenues for part time jobs also and internship opportunities uh, in japanese companies and international companies which are having hub in tokyo so besides i would like to give a very short uh, a case study uh, as you can see the japan is now providing generous oda official development assistance to various countries like uh, thailand and philippines and indonesia besides india also through high speed rail projects and this creates a demand for diverse and multicultural workforce to work in such companies so this is a very exciting opportunity for the young talents so i will be just sharing the lifestyle here in japan i had a great learning experience here in japan as this allowed me to pursue my personal interest i never had the opportunity to experience karate which i did here besides i also took part in uh, the calligraphy classes called uh, shodo and i also was very lucky to take part in the rice bonding ceremony called omochi suki and this is a lab party which uh, is occurring very frequently here in japan besides we have uh utisa which is a international students association of indian students here besides there are other international students associations also which uh, organize various cultural events like diwali and this is a very famous indian delicacy samosa party and this is i was very much lucky to attend the sumo match which i got the opportunity through my university department so i would like to just say the all all the young students all the best and uh, we are eagerly looking forward to meet some of you very soon now i finish here and hand over to ms khushi thank you thank you mr dheeraj for the amazing uh, presentation i'm sure your presentation gave students and friends a gist of the study and work life in japan i'll share the agenda once again so now we have tohoku university Tohoku University is one of the most acclaimed public universities in Japan. It offers a range of international co-educational programs to students interested in biology, chemical and mechanical engineering and economics. Its high education standards and diverse learning environment has proved to broaden students' perspective and ensures employment opportunities. Now I'd like to request Professor Watanabe from the Global Learning Center and Professor Ying Chen from the Graduate School of Engineering. to give us an insight into the university thank you very much may i change it to the share mode now yes yeah, sure okay thank you yes we can see your screen okay thank you very much let me start okay Hello everyone. I'm Ying Chen from Tohoku University, Sendai, Japan. This online event, and together with uh, Professor Yumiko Watanabe, she works in the. I'd like to thank for the organizer for the uh, in their office of the University of Tokyo and for all. Um, Professor Chen, I'm sorry for interrupting, but you are breaking. We can't really hear you properly. You're breaking a little. It is a some. Sorry, it is a. No problem. It's a stroke. Yeah, I like it. It is okay now. Um, it's better, but we cannot see your presentation. Mm -hmm. Professor Chen, uh, can you please turn off your video? I think uh, there will be some uh, issue in the video playing, so you can turn off your video and so that we can hear your audio and slides. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So you mean the video is better close? Okay. Okay. Let me try. Sorry. So I'm still in the the share mode. Not uh, right now. We cannot see your okay. presentation at the moment. Okay, it is coming. Can yeah. you see? Okay. Yes, we can see now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Thank you much. Thank you very much. Sorry for small trouble. So let's continue. Okay, so we thank for this opportunity to introduce uh, our university. So our international course is so-called the FGL course. And let me introduce. Firstly, started from the place where we are. So we are University, uh, Tohoku University is in Sentai, in Sentai City. You see, this is our city. A lot of green. It's a lush green, uh, greenery city. It is called City of Tree. And Sentai is in north part of Japan, and it's 300 kilometers from Tokyo. Take the Shinkansen. It express train. It takes one and a half hour. So it is uh, just a lot of green. And I show you one old pictures and this is taken 99 years ago, near 100 years, when uh, Dr. Einstein was visit to Hobo University. And he said that time, Sentai is the most suitable city for academic research. So after 100 years, we are still feel so. So we are doing research and education here. We enjoy the quiet and clean, beautiful city, and with a very comfortable daily life. Okay, please show our campus. Uh, our, we have a three, uh, four campus. It is a spread it over the large city, look like this. Here is the center city, it's the center of the city. And our four campus are all very easy to be access, and all the access time from the center city is within 10 minutes especially in the Kawauchi campus and Aobayama campus, the subway station is just on our campus. So it is wonderful and very convenient. Okay, our university is a Tokyo University as the third imperial university established more than uh, 100 years ago. It is uh, 114 years history is now, and it is a post-national university. Uh, so this is a scale of our university. We have a 10 uh, faculty for undergraduates and 15 graduate schools and three uh, professional graduate schools and six research institutes with a high level of top, uh, world leading researchers. And here is a student um, uh, numbers. It is not a big scale one. And uh, this is more than, we have more than 3,000 faculty. So please look at one number, it's one, one uh, two, six. This is the numbers of uh, faculty to student numbers. So if you uh, understand, you know, the smaller these numbers, it means the student will be taken more carefully. For, uh, it is a number of students for uh, taking care, average by one faculty. So this number is small, the means the student receive the better care. And this is a number uh, also with uh, MIT. So it is a very small number compared to large university. Tohoku universities have uh, uh, their university principles from their establishment. And this is three uh, policy, the principle, research first, open door, and practice oriented research and education. So Tohoku University uh, was selected by the government in the 2017 as one of the three designated national university in Japan. Also, I would like to show you some nearest ranking. So this is a uh, ranking by the, uh, the UK, the Time Higher Education. They are released the ranking every year for the world university and also for different countries. So this is ranking of the Japan version. And to this year and the last year, Tohoku University continues the fourth rank in this list, in this rank. And also they are listed several other kinds of ranking and this is the numbers of the rank of ranking different ranking system. And here I want to especially introduce another kind of ranking. It is voted by the high school teachers of each year. And the high school teachers was voted each year for the best university in Japan, which they want to introduce their students, recommend it to their student to go. So over uh, more than 10 years, Tokyo University only have one year, so the second rank and all the other years in the first rank. So this is a kind of levels of education. Okay, so under the spirit of, uh, as I said, the research force and the practical oriented, 
Kongfu University professors do the big contributions from their wonderful research and uh, the invention into the society and to the human being. And some uh, become the very important key technologies of even nowadays. So here is uh, several professors. Professor Honda, he invented very important materials of steel and magnetic materials. And here is, um, uh, this is Yagi, Professor Yagi, he invented the antenna, Yagi antenna. So you see this one, it is still uh, widely used nowadays. And he, this is uh, uh, Koichi Tanaga, he is a Nobel Prize of Chemistry, Lawrence. And he is a um, uh, graduation from, graduates from our School of Engineer. Uh, this is uh, Professor Nishizawa. He is our previous president, and he did uh, very important contributions to the development of optical fiber. And this has become the key technology of nowadays, the IT technology. And this is uh, Yuasawa, uh, Yuasaki professor. He invented the perpendicular magnetic recording device. So this is make our enjoy nowadays the uh, more and more powerful electric devices and more and more smaller sizes. And here is uh, uh, Professor Masaoka. He made a very important invention. So it is a USB flash memory. So everyone's use it in our daily life. But it's invented by a university professor. So this is uh, several ones. We're, we're <laughs> very proud about them. And also, as I said, Tohoku University is a, uh, is a very open university, and we welcome the students and the guests from all of the country, uh, all of the world. So we have uh, uh, 250 partners all over the world, and we have more than 2,000 international students now. So it is from different districts, and this is mainly large part from the Asia country. Okay, so under the currency of uh, globalization of education, together with other several universities of global 30 universities, we started to uh, the English medium uh, program 10 years ago, just 10 years ago. So we have more than 20 graduate program and we have only three undergraduate program uh, fully in English. So one is uh, chemistry, uh, advanced molecular chemistry uh, run by School of Science. One is uh, international mechanical aerospace uh, engineering. We call it is MRQ. It is run by School of Engineering. And another one is applied marine biology. It is run by School of Agriculture. So I come from the uh, School of Engineer. So I want to focus introduce this our course. Uh, if you are interested in other two courses, you go. You can visit our website. We have a full of information. So uh, let me start to briefly introduce our school of engineer. So this is our campus. Our campus called Aobayama campus. Aobayama means gray leaves mountain. So you see, it is just like this. Uh, the the thing is look like the name. And here is uh, uh, this part is all the school of engineer. So all of this part is a school of engineer. These corners is a school of science. And this part, they did not show in the pictures. It is our new Alabama campus. They have agriculture and another uh, facility. So our uh, group of uh, mechanical engineers is in this area. And I'm now just in my office inside this building. So this is uh, our uh, School of Engineers, it's largest school of a uh, university. It is um, the number of students and the faculty all take one third of the university. So it's the largest organization. Uh, to the School of Engineers have uh, four divisions. So one is a mechanical aerospace engineering, one is electric information physics engineering, and another is uh, applied chemistry, chemistry engineering, biomolecular engineering, and this is another one's very strong, famous material science and engineering. And it's a civil engineering and agriculture. So I mark your course is running by the division of mechanical and aerospace engineering. So now I go to introduce a bit more details about this course. 
So here is our course. It is called IMARC U. U means undergraduates. We have another IMARC G. It is a graduate course. Uh, so these several uh, departments involved in the IMARC U education. It is, uh, uh, I will introduce this department uh, one by one. Totally, we have more than 100 laboratories uh, related to the IMARC U. So IMARC U students have a big option. Uh, selected the directions of their future uh, field. So it is uh, covered the wide range of research of the engineer field. It is not only the traditional imagination of a mechanical engineer. So it is uh, uh, multi uh, interdisciplinary research and education. So first the department is uh, mechanical system engineer. This is a, a little bit close to the traditional mechanical engineer, but not only <laughs> traditional mechanical engineer uh, as the energy environment materials, but also the multidisciplinary, such as the new functional system and some macro nano processing technology and energy conversion and uh, uh, various energy uh, conversion systems and the functional systems. So there are just a several keywords. Uh, for this department. Next one is uh, Department of Fine Mechanics. Actually, I belong to the Fine Mechanics and I'm the physicist. And uh, uh, the Fine Mechanics, the main part is the nanomechanics. So nano, you know, it's a very, very small word. So not only mechanics means large machines, airplane, the ship and automobile. It is also have a very, very small word. And this is uh, some keyword. So, so that we are uh, use the, the, the mechanical, uh, fine mechanics. It is uh, a field of use of sophisticated mechanics at the atomic and the molecular level. So you see this, it is a high resolution uh, electronic microscopic. So this is one. One more is the robotics. Robotics is one of the most strong uh, the field of university and they have uh, some very famous professors and research and the, uh, so their uh, the goal is uh, to create the future robots as well as uh, foster the core existence of human being and the robots. So this is uh, a lot of uh, very uh, world leading researchers is uh, in this kind of field in the concept of the core existence of a human and the robots, so such as uh, some robotics is large ones and some is very, very small ones. Even they have a molecular robots and the DNA robots. So this is a very interesting field. One more department is the aerospace engineer. Actually, this is also another very famous uh, department of the university with a very, very well-known professors. And here's a professor Yoshida, he's very famous and he received some, uh, the, the uh, Google Lunar X Prize in the uh, some years ago. So his group have uh, many, many foreign students and uh, it's a very uh, fantastic research group. And their uh, researchers is aimed at to the study of advanced technology of the aerospace mechanics and they are uh, to break the new frontier of a space exploration. So this is uh, also exciting uh, field. Okay, so this is a several main field I introduced. Uh, here is uh, just the outline of the curriculum of a four year. So first year students study the labor arts and the basic science. And this, from the second year, they studied basic specific subjects and studied the lab-based projects and together with the Japanese students. And also at the end of the second year, every student assigned to a laboratory. Then from third year, they were involved in the laboratories and started the research and the whole the fourth year, so one year, they conducted the graduation research. So our students have a chance of a very earlier touch the real research field. So this is a, a big advantage. And also our student normally, not only Japanese student and also international student in the School of Engineer almost continue to the uh, master 
program after graduate from the bachelor. So even in our School of Engineer, we make a six year uh, educational program since more than 90% of students go to the graduate school. So in the graduate school, we have IMARC-T and it's included the master and the doctor. So students can uh, go to the very uh, high levels research. Okay, this is just a scene of our graduation ceremony for the international student. So this is a is a chair of a department and they are wear in the traditional dresses to celebrate the graduation for international students. Okay, I think maybe some of you are interested in the career path of IMAC student. I will show this statistic data. Since we have started the course of 10 years, we have many graduates already. So this is some information. And also this data can be found from our homepage. So this is IMAC U graduates. And uh, about half of Mac, IMAC U graduates in, uh, enter the IMAC G. And another 20% go to another, uh, go to the graduate school in the other uh, University of Japan or the University of Abroad. So after, uh, then we talk about the graduates of IMAC G uh, for the master program. When they finish, uh, one third student uh, started work in Japanese company and another one third so, uh, further go to the PhD uh, program. And for the PhD graduates, it is a large portion of the study to research as a postdoc. So I especially mentioned about the Japanese uh, company, we have many students finish the uh, master degree, then they started working in Japanese ca uh, company. So amazingly, always uh, all the students this type that work in the top Japanese company, such as um, Benzo, Hitachi, uh, Nissan, Honda, Yamaha, Sumitomo, etc., as well, Toyota, and some famous overseas company like IBM or Google, Facebook, and some things. So this is uh, some physical situations, and you can find more detail uh, data in our homepage. Uh, also, this uh, the starting uh, when started the program. All this international program is only for international students and Japanese students in the different programs. But from the 1980, we started the core study courses. So we also accept the Japanese students with a high level for English and uh, through the global entrance examination. So. Nowadays, in our IMAC U class, there uh, both have the Japanese student and the international student. So, if you want to have more information about the department research field, you can go to more detail from our homepage. So, this is two resources. This is IMAC homepage. This is Department of Mechanics, and more detail is uh, you can find all the uh, inside the contents of research of, uh, as I said. 100 lab from our website. So this is uh, all the YouTube movie of each lab. Now it is also only in Japanese, but they will soon will put the English exam, uh, explanation. Uh, explanation. And here is the posters, both in English and Japanese. And every posters show the main research uh, field and the, uh, show some uh, scenery of a scene of a, a laboratory life and also with all the professors contact the information and even you can throw the home page uh, with uh, professors you can make appointment to visit online so this is what okay just a few minutes left i want to very briefly introduce how to apply so basically everything's in our home page and the new uh, application guide of next year is just released recently. So you can have all the information from here. And the, uh, very quickly introduction, they have several steps. Uh, the application is in the January and the first screen, um, the document based screen is in the February and we have the second screen examination uh, in the March and then the result will be announced at the end of March and all the formalities for the enrollment is started with this uh, in April. So this is rough schedule. And this is detailed schedules for the uh, 2022. And the uh, most important thing is the application period is very short, only one week. So please notice it.
and there are also various information about qualifications and what kind of uh, documents we needed to submit. And this is more detailed descriptions about three courses. We have a slightly different uh, criteria. So, and this is uh, information about expense. As mentioned already in the general introduction, the totally, uh, generally Japanese tuition, especially national university is very cheap. So this is uh, basically uh, the exp expense. It is a rough uh, amount of United States uh, university. So we have a very strong uh, scholarship actually. So with our three FGL courses, we have eight students with the top entrance examination school received the government uh, mixed scholarship. And this is very large scholarship and continue for four years. And also for other students who cannot receive this uh, uh, max student, they are very, very high possibilities to receive the Tohoku University President Fellowship. It is also a very big amount. It is all actually covered the total amount of duration. So it is means you do not need to pay the duration by yourself. And they have some <coughs> extra uh, scholarship for the living uh, uh, scan. So you can also uh, please check this information from our website. Okay, so lastly, I show the pictures of a full season of our campus, and this is the spring. It is the cherry flowers, and this is the summer. It is just now. This is just the scenery of now in our campus, and it is the color for August, uh, for uh, autumn, and this is a very beautiful uh, winter. So we are warmly to welcome you join us. Please contact us with any questions. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor Chen, for the comprehensive presentation. Now we will have a five-minute Q&A session. Um, there are a couple of questions in the Q&A box. So would you like to pick up a few questions to answer? OK, I think uh, Professor Watanabe will together uh, with me to answer the questions. Professor Watanabe, are you here? Yes, I'm here. I try to answer uh, <laughs> no. on time, <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, what uh, um, could, Chen, one of the students asking, I want to apply for the master's in aerospace and mechanics, car mm -hmm. engineering. Mm -hmm. Is it available in English? Yes, of course we do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, it's uh, very welcome. Please visit uh, our uh, homepage. Uh, we have also food science in master. I, uh, yeah, we have a, you know, very convenient course list. <laughs> so I will share the link uh, in a maybe chat box, not the Q and A. Is that okay? Yes, um, if there are links you would want to share with the students, you can put them in the chat box for the reference. Uh, okay, I, I do. Okay. Thank I, you. Um, there are a few questions I would like to address. Um, one student is asking if EJU is mandatory, the mm -hmm. EJU examination. It's not mandatory, but it's one of the choice. Mm -hmm. We accept the score of the EJU, but not mandatory. We also accept accept other many standardized examination. Okay, thank you. And there's one more question. Um, are there scholarships provided? Yes, we do. And uh, um, sorry for interrupting, you can continue. Uh, what, yeah, so, some of them are mixed, you know, Japanese government full scholarship. We also offer the President of Scholarship, Fellowship Money, that's unique from Tohoku University. I would like to add to Professor Watanabe's point. Um, mixed scholarship is highly recommended. Um, many international students coming to Japan to pursue further studies. Most of them uh, have the mixed scholarship and we'll attach the application guidelines as well. So please have a look at the chat box. Okay. 
Yeah, uh, one thing that I want to add, the Future Global Leadership Program, the, our undergraduate program, offer the eight seat for the next scholarship, not through the embassy, just apply to our program and to get the high score. <laughs> That's an important point, which uh, we recommend, Tohoku University recommend you to the Japanese government. So there is two different routes. One is embassy recommended, another one is university recommended. Thank you. Um, there's one more question that uh, says, um, a student has graduated uh, in 2020. So can they apply uh, this year to the engineering program? No problem. We do not have a age limit. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, we'll take two more questions. Um, is there a master's? Do you provide master's in psychology? Psychology, I, I'm not quite sure. I have to double check, but maybe not in English. In mm -hmm. Japanese, we provide offered all the program, all subjects, but in okay. English, maybe not. All right. It's and very, is mm, to the culture base, I think, so Japanese. Okay. And is um, IELTS or TOEFL uh, mandatory? What is mandatory? Uh, IELTS or TOEFL on the English. Um, yeah, yeah. We, uh, yes, it's mandatory. Mm -hmm. It's mandatory. Thank you so much, professors, uh, for answering the questions. You can share the links in the chat box so that students can refer to them at any point. And we'll proceed with the agenda. Thank you so much once again for the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now we have um, Ritsumeikan Asia Pacific University. Um, Ritsumeikan Asia Pacific University is one of the leading private universities owing to its uh, multicultural learning environment and it also possesses a highly diverse international environment and its programs in the field of humanities is very well recognized internationally and nationally. The university also provides scholarships and excellent opportunities to its students. Now I'd like to request Ms. Vikti Singh as India's representative to give us an insight into the university. Thank you, thank you, Kuchi San, for the introduction. All right, uh, just briefly, once again, I'm Deepti and I represent Ritsumikan Asia Pacific University in India. Uh, so the picture that you see here, this is our campus, um, but let's look at the university uh, by some numbers. So uh, what makes APU unique is our student mix. 50% of our student population comes from 90 different regions. And uh, the other 50% is of course Japanese. And similarly, our faculty, uh, it comes from 21 different countries and it makes 50% of the total number. So it's a very diverse, very multicultural campus. Uh, we have about five and a half thousand students currently, and uh, most of these are undergraduate students. Uh, we have about 200 students in master's and PhD as well. Uh, so APU is currently about 20 years old, and um, this is the uh, world university rankings, the times. And uh, we are ranked to 22nd in uh, out of 800 universities in Japan. And if you're considering only private universities, then we are fifth out of 640 universities. Uh, just coming to its location, we are located in the uh, um, largest southernmost island of Japan. Uh, this, uh, it, the prefecture is called Oita and uh, the city is Beppu. This red dot uh, indicates our location. Uh, it's a mid-sized city with 120,000 people. Um, it is, you know, because of APU now, it has become a very multicultural uh, city. And otherwise also, it's a very popular tourist destination amongst uh, Japanese. Uh, it's very popular for its own scenes. There are about 2,000 
uh, natural hot springs. All right, now talking about our courses, we have two colleges. Uh, one is College of International Management uh, and the other one is College of Asia Pacific Studies. Uh, so talking about College of International Management, the degree here is called uh, Bachelor of uh, Business Administration. Uh, it's a four-year course uh, and you can specialize in either of the following, uh, accounting and finance, strategic management and organization, marketing, innovation and economics. Now, one special thing about our management program is that it is AACSB accredited and um, which puts us in the top 5% of business world uh, schools all over the world. So uh, that's a very high accredited the accreditation and if you want to study bachelors in business administration uh, we are the only university that offers it which has this accreditation um, the other school is asia pacific studies um, again similarly this is a four-year course and uh, you can specialize in environment and development culture, society and media hospitality and tourism international relations and peace studies either of these and um, uh, the degree here is called Bachelor of Social Sciences. I want to, uh, you know, there are a lot of questions uh, about uh, the language education, whether it is mandatory to know Japanese if you want to study in Japan or not. Japan, uh, our university offers all the courses uh, in both the languages, English and Japanese. Uh, it's not at all mandatory to know Japanese when you enroll. Uh, we uh, teach Japanese from scratch and for six months, uh, there are intensive Japanese classes uh, just to enable you to uh, get fluent in day-to-day -day language. Uh, this is our dorm, just, um, you know, um, it's about 10 minutes walk from our classes. It is called AP House. Um, there's a guaranteed room for uh, the students in first year. Um, these are fully furnished rooms and um, uh, the rental is uh, 49,000 JPY per month and it includes all the utilities. Uh, there are single rooms as well as there are shared rooms. Uh, there, there, is, uh, you know, there, there is a door here in between for privacy as well. So um, uh, these are fully furnished with the kitchen and everything. So students who are uh, visiting Japan for the first time, they need not worry about accommodation. Second year onwards, though, the, many students choose to move uh, move out with their friends and they uh, rent an apartment together, and it is more cost friendly that way. Um, so yeah, you can guess because we have so many nationalities living on our campus. Uh, uh, the student life on campus is really vibrant. We have about 110 student-led organizations, different activity and sports, cultural circles where students can participate. Uh, we uh, regularly organize multicultural weeks where one gets to experience um, you know, the cuisine, the cultural activities from a particular uh, country. Uh, coming to the scholarship opportunities, again, there were a lot of questions. So, um, you know, um, in APU, we, we have two kinds of scholarships. Uh, one is um, tuition reduction program, which is uh, entitled to uh, every international student. If you apply to APU, you will be uh, rewarded with, uh, you know, a, a tuition reduction scholarship. It can range anything between 30 to 100 percent. Um, and after enrollment, there are other private scholarships to assist you with your living expenses. So, um, they, of course, you can, uh, you know, similarly apply for MEXT. All uh, universities have a MEXT uh, scholarship. So you can apply for those as well. So coming to our cost of attendance, um, as I said, the tuition scholarship ranges between 30 to 100 uh, percent. Depending on the scholarship you are awarded, your cost of tuition goes down. So um, the tuition and the living expenses, which are approximately uh, 7 lakh, those are your fixed expenses per annum. 
So here, for example, if your tuition reduction scholarship is 80%, in that case, you would be paying a tuition of about 1,80,000 uh, 1, rupees. And other than that, there are living expenses that have to be borne by you. Uh, there are other uh, expenses which are uh, one time and they will be borne by you only in the first year, but second year onwards, they are not applicable, uh, such as the admission fee and uh, there is some insurance cost. Now talking about the job placements, um, so uh, our job placement rate is very high. Currently it is at 96%. And uh, we have a dedicated career office at our campus, which takes care of all the internships and all the job interviews. They are conducted on our campus. There are about 200 plus companies that visit our campus every year. And uh, if I specifically talk about Indian students, um, although most of the students choose to uh, find employment or go for further studies in Japan, um, they have, you know, the data that we have, it shows that 85% of them have found a job in Japan in 2019. This data is, uh, you know, a little old because of COVID, but uh, the placements were equally good last year as well. Um, again, you know, you, APU being uh, such a diverse and multicultural university, uh, we believe that we, uh, our students have a unique skill set. Um, apart from, uh, uh, you know, bilingual uh, skills, we have, uh, we tend to have a global perspective living on the campus with so many other nationalities. It gives us a cultural intelligence. And uh, that is one of the USPs of uh, the students of APU. Um, here you can see some of the major employers uh, where, uh, who come to our campus for recruitments regularly. Some of these names are Japanese, such as Nissan and um, you know Google Japan, Fujitsu. Uh, but again, uh, the opportunities are international also. So there are other companies which come to our campus which recruit for other locations. And um, in India, if you talk about, there are plenty of um, uh, Japanese um, corporates where you can um, uh, where you could be working. Uh, there are other, uh, you know, other students who choose to go to graduate school. Uh, so some of the big names, uh, such as Howard University, Yale University, our graduates have made a cut there. Uh, I want to inform you about our upcoming event. These are mock lectures that uh, we have planned for high school students. Uh, there's one mock lecture in both the colleges. Uh, for APM, uh, you know, it will be held on July 11th. And here's the registration link. Um, you can probably click a photo and register in advance. Uh, for APS, our social sciences uh, college, uh, it will be on July 25th. It's a Sunday again. Uh, I hope uh, the deadline is June 29th. So please register in advance for these. Uh, they will be very interesting for sure. And it will introduce you to Japanese higher education. You will understand the difference um, in the quality of education. Uh, this is our application schedule. So currently we are open for, so we have two enrollments every year. One is in April, the other one is in September. So for April enrollments, we are currently open. Uh, we, uh, we will be accepting applications till October 13th. Uh, for September enrollment, uh, most of the high school students, um, you know, they, they uh, are usually eligible for this enrollment uh, because of our academic calendar. We will be opening our uh, admissions in on October 4th, and they, uh, they, they are two periods from October 4th to October 27th. Again, we will open them in March 21st, but, uh, you know, the chances of scholarship are higher and better uh, if you apply early. So uh, if you can, please do apply early. This is the QR code to our admissions website. It will directly take you to our admissions page and uh, you can uh, click this button, apply here, apply. Uh, so, you know, most of the information that I have, I'll be speaking from now onwards will is uh, available on this page. 
So our application process has two stages. Stage one is online application and online assessment. So basically we will be screening your documents. I will be talking about the documents later. And uh, there's a brief assessment uh, test. Um, and after that, you get the results for stage one. If you clear the stage one, then there's an interview scheduled. Um, after which you get the final application results along with the scholarship results. So uh, basically before you make any other big payment uh, admission fee, uh, you will uh, know of the scholarship you would be receiving. So the documents that we usually require is, um, you know, our application information, which is on the system, uh, brief essays, these are essays, I'm calling them essays, but they're really short ones, 150 words each. Um, then there are academic transcripts, your 10th, 11th, and uh, we accept um, uh, we, we accept predicted scores for 12th grade. Uh, so uh, those, we need letter of recommendation, we need uh, language proficiency test scores. Uh, these are not mandatory, but um, you know they, they are high in weighted. So if you can appear for these, please do. It uh, enables you to a better scholarship. Uh, so there is an application fee, which is about uh, 5,500 yen, which is approximately 3,000 rupees or a little less. So uh, other than that, you know, we also um, look at the extracurricular activities that you have participated in. They are also equally important. Uh, these are the cutoffs for the language proficiency test scores. So if you're choosing to appear for IELTS, it is six, TOEFL test, 75, so on and so forth. Um, uh, there was a concern that IELTS exams are not being conducted. So there are home editions that have come out. For TOEFL, there's a special home edition test, which most of the universities are accepting and APU is also accepting them currently. So there is, similarly, there's IELTS indicator test, which you can take from home only. Um, yeah, there is uh, a Duolingo test, uh, which is also accepted at APU. So you could look at either of these if you're applying. So this uh, describes the, uh, the the interview process in detail, the screening process in detail. So basically they will be, uh, as I mentioned in stage one, they will, after screening your applica uh, application, there will be an online test, which is approximately 30 minutes, Watson Glacier test, which is 30 minutes. And then there's a core abilities assessment, which is 20 minutes. Uh, and uh, that's our stage one. And then there is an interview, which is typically 15 to 20 minutes. And after that, you, you get to know your final application results and your scholarship results. Here is our um, contact information. Uh, we are, there are two representatives in India. One is based out of Mumbai. So in case you are in and around Mumbai, uh, please contact Ms. Ishana. Otherwise you can take down my number um, and contact me either on the number or uh, the email ID. Um, Okay, that, that's all from me. Before uh, ending this, I would like to show you a brief video. It's, it's a very brief one. Hey guys, this is 2018 Spring Entrance Ceremony and I'm Saad. And I'm Ruth from APU Student Social Media Unit. And today we're on a mission. Saad, what's the mission? The mission is to make friends from as many countries as we can. And this semester we have students from 38 different countries joining us here at APU. So let's wait no more and meet them. Let's go. Ramen? Mm, ramen, ramen. I like ramen too. I mean, yeah. that's a... that, that was the main reason I 
So guys, uh, what's your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is Vivek Yoti and I'm from Nepal. My name is Prodot and I'm from Nepal as well. So I'm from Rwanda, I'm from Nigeria. From Sri Lanka, from Korea. I'm from Fiji. From Russia, from Canada. I'm Azerbaijan, from France. I'm from Finland, but I study in Norway. From the USA, Germany. From Germany. From Mongolia. From India. From Thailand. From Indonesia. <laughs> It is a very small place, but it's also very like friendly, and you have everything you need in the like around you. you know, everyone is so friendly here, yeah. and uh, I've so far I've found so many people, so many friends. We're a family here. We're a family here. That's great. It's pretty amazing. Um, it's very different from home, but you really start to enjoy the culture. First of all, would be the culture, I guess. The people are really nice over here. For me, it's also the same culture, and I really wanted to learn like time management, and business ethics from Japanese people. I like to uh, engage with Japanese culture much more uh, in Italy. Like, I want to engage with the locals, not uh, not just international students. I want to engage in local cuisine, like local traditions, tea ceremonies, and etc. It's so beautiful. It's beautiful. I love it here. I, I feel like at home. I don't see the like uh, home sick. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah me too. I feel like I'm at home. <laughs> everybody's so friendly. Everybody's so just lovely. Everything is lovely in Japan right now. Well, it's a very multicultural community, so I aim to get a lot of friends here <laughs> and make good relationships with people. I'm looking forward to all many women and to learn new things from it. So that brings us to the end of today's ceremony. We hope you had a great time as we did. And congratulations to all the new students. And wish you all the best for your future. And all that's left to say is... Until next, next time. time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Bitti, for the presentation. Um, we'll start the five-minute Q&A session right now. Um, students, if you have questions, please feel free to uh, type, put them in the Q&A box. Um, Ms. Dipti, would you like to answer uh, any question in particular? Sure, sure. Um, just can you give me an idea from where yeah, does it sure. start for APU? I can help you. Um, so a few students have asked if there are computer science courses. No, no, you. we do not have any computer science courses. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, Ms. Kushi, I will be reading the questions um, sure. from the chat box. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, there's a question about MBA major in sales and marketing. Yes, we do have an MBA program. Please visit our website or contact me personally. I will be sharing more details with you. Uh, yeah, about the MEC scholarship, uh, the dates should be on the, uh, you know, we uh, you will have to check the embassy website for the dates exactly. Um, in case you are applying to APU, you are automatically, you just have to ch check one box and your application will automatically be considered for the university max. So there are two max. One is the university max and the other one is uh, the embassy one. So a master, is there a master's business course? Yes, there is. As I said, there's an MBA program. Um, any other question for APU that you see, uh, Kushi san? Um, just a second. Just a second. Um, uh, does the MBA program require professional work experience? Yes, it does. We need three years of full time work experience, but that is still the time you enroll. So if you know, we, since we accept applications one year in advance. So if you think by the time you enroll in APU, you will finish three years, you can apply. I mean, psychology, we do not have psychology. I apologize. Do you have political science as a science? We have bachelor in social sciences and political science. You know, we, uh, we, we have uh, various subjects related to political science. I don't understand the question quite well. 
Um, Ms. Bipti, there's this question. Um, one student is asking if it's uh, mandatory to take the English proficiency test, um, even if that student has uh, taken all of his master's uh, subjects in English. Master's. Yeah, so he's taken all of his subjects uh, in English for uh, uh, the graduate program that he is in. But does he still need to take the uh, English proficiency test for PhD? Yeah, so it's not mandatory. I mentioned uh, earlier also, but it's highly recommended. If you're aiming to get a better scholarship, then uh, you, it's recommended that you, uh, you know, appear for one of the English proficiency tests. Okay, we can pick up one more question. Um, is there anything you'd want to answer? There's one about, do you have foreign languages? Yes, we have other foreign languages, but uh, they are not, uh, so there's no, it won't be a BA in so-and-so language. It is only an elective subject that you will study. You, they, they are credit courses though. Okay, thank you, Ms. Bipti, uh, for answering the questions. Um, it would be great if you could share a few links um, so that students can refer to them at any point. Um, sure. I think you had mentioned about the mock um the uh, the, the mock uh, class lectures yes. Yes. yes so you could share the links um in the chat box so that students can participate in those lectures sure sure i will do that thank you thanks and you can uh, also continue answering the questions that are in the q a box mm -hmm. all right i'll do that thank you thanks thank a lot. You so much um so we proceed with the um agenda i'll share the screen right now so lastly, we have Shimane University. Um, Shimane University is world-renowned national university in Japan. The multidisciplinary programs at the university uh, enable students to adopt different perspectives and approaches towards learning. Hundreds of international students from different countries master in a myriad of fields through their programs and land up with great opportunities. Now I'd like to request Professor Catherine Simpson from the International Center to give us an insight into the university. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. Um, just allow me to share my screen very quickly. Yes, your screen is visible, thank you. Oh. Okay, hold on just a second. Oh, sorry, it's not starting from the beginning. Okay, so um, let me uh, allow myself to start. So hello everyone, my name is Catherine Simpson. I am from the International Center at Shimane University. Shimane University is a national university, uh, which means it's different than a public or private, which means um, there are lots of different um, government regulations that go along with it that are very beneficial for the students that come here. So first of all, you may be wondering where Shimane Prefecture is. So if you look at this map, um, you can see Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka, Fukuoka, and here's this pink area is called Shimane. It's the Shimane Prefecture and it has a little patch of islands. It's beautiful. It has a geopark called uh, Oki Islands. So here's Shimane. So if you were to go by plane from Tokyo, it would take about one and a half hours. And if you were going to go by train from Osaka, it would take about four hours by train to arrive at the Matsue campus. That's including extra travel time via bus or however else you transfer from the airport to the campus. Okay, so what is... What's famous about Shimane Prefecture? There we have Matsui Castle, which is um, you can see here in the upper right hand corner. And then in the bottom left hand corner, Iwami Ginzan Silver Mine, which is a UNESCO World Heritage um, site. Uh, both of these are also uh, Matsui Castle, as well as also Izumo Taisha Grand Shrine, which is considered a national treasure along with Matsui Castle. There are only 12 existing um, original castles left in Japan, five of which are considered national treasures and Matsue Castle, which is where one of Shimane University's campuses is located, is designated as one of those places. So another very famous um, aspect of Matsue City 
which is where one of the campuses of Shimane University is, is the, the matcha, the green tea culture, and the Japanese sweets, wagashi, um, is very, very famous here. And you can experience um, something very different from, say, the city life um, and the sort of city experience of drinking tea and having Japanese sweets. Um, we have two campuses. Oh, first, let me uh, talk a little bit about the population and a little bit about Matsue. So Matsue is where the main campus is. Um, the population of Matsue is about 200,000 people. And here you can see the climate is uh, fairly manageable. In January, it's about two degree or four degrees. And in August, it's about 26 degrees average. It does snow in the city, um, in the uh, outskirts of the town, more in countryside areas. Um, it does snow a little bit more, but definitely just get some rain boots and then you'll be fine. Um, so, hold on just a second. Next, um, I'd like to say that Matsue is a place that is very, uh, it's full of nice festivals. Um, we have a festival that happens once every 10 years, which is the one you can see on the left-hand side here, upper left-hand side. We have a very beautiful fireworks festival that happens in the summer. Um, lots of different cultural events around the Matsai Castle moat. We have a lantern festival as well. So just lots of different cultural events that you normally wouldn't get to participate in unless you were in the countryside of Japan, which that is where Shimani University is located. So you get a very different picture of Japan um, as opposed to living in, say, Tokyo or Osaka or, lar or larger cities like that. So some of the research projects that um, Shimani University is working on is something that I would like to introduce. So first, we have the Next Generation Tatara Co-Creation Center, which it, we call Nexta. Um, it's basically, it works with Tatara, which means um, it's an old way of collecting iron from the soil um, and then they turn this oil this iron and turn it into steel and use the steel for aerospace technology cars all, all sorts of different things but um, the center was officially inaugurated this year um, in the spring so many students can come and learn about the future of the metal material fields also sdgs is something shimani university puts a lot of power into um, and trying to complete, uh, do our best to contribute to the 17 goals. So first, let me introduce Shimani University. We have two different campuses. We have Matsai campus, which is our main campus on the right-hand side here. And then we have Izumo campus on the left-hand side, which is our medical facility campus. So if you look at the map here, this green area is called Matsai city, and this orange area is called Izumo city. So uh, they're very, very close by train, maybe about an hour away, 40 minutes, something like that. So about Shimani University courses, uh, a lot of you may be wondering what kind of co courses are offered in English or what can I do in English at Shimani University or what can I do in Japanese at Shimani University? So these are all, this is a list of all of the courses that we have available at Shimani University. Everything in red is simply graduate coursework. So allow me to just go through and explain a little bit. So the Faculty of Law and Literature is in Japanese only. And when I say that, um, I mean that you need to have level two, N2, or N1 of the Japanese Language Proficiency Test, or the JLPT, to be able to apply for this undergraduate facility. Uh, Faculty of Human Sciences is not available to uh, international students. This graduate school of human uh, sciences is, again, N2, N1, preferably N1, because it's all in Japanese. Uh, education is out, but we do have, you can take the inter interdisciplinary faculty of science and engineering in Japanese, or we have a bilingual course option, which I will go into in a little further detail in just a moment. Then we have the Faculty of Life and Environmental Science in Japanese only. 
and then the Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology is in Japanese or all in English, either. Either one is fine. And the Graduate School of Medical Research is the same. It can be all in Japanese or all in English. So just to go through this again, Faculty of Law and Literature and the Faculty of Life and Environmental Science are in Japanese only. You need N2 or above of the JLPT. Um, also, if you're applying for as an undergraduate student, you would need the EJU. And I know this is a concern for many students because it, I've heard the EJU was canceled um, in many countries. Um, but let's I'll go on and explain Shimane University um, and then we can answer questions later. So um, let me talk a little bit about the bilingual course for the Faculty of Science and Engineering. So if you look at this chart here, for your first year, um, you're studying common courses in natural science, uh, fundamental, course, fundamental courses in science and engineering in English. Um, your first year and your second year are mainly going to be in English. And then once you start reaching your third year and your fourth year, you start to be able to gain the Japanese ability, Japanese language ability to study in um, in Japanese. So by the end of your undergraduate studies, then you're going to be studying purely in Japanese. Um, but for reports and exams and theses, English can be used. So uh, for the bilingual education course, you do need to begin, you do need the JLPT level of N4 or higher, and you need a TOEFL score or an IELTS score of a band score here of uh, 5.5 or higher, as it says. Um, and here in this department, uh, um, we have especially a lot of students are interested in information systems, design and data science. That's the closest thing we have to computer science. Next, I would like to introduce the Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology. We have a master's course and a doctoral course. So uh, we have majors of science and engineering science of environmental systems, uh, agricultural and life sciences. And among those you have, again, for the major, we have environmental systems design and data science. So again, very close to computer, tech, computer design and technology, um, architectural chemistry, um, and then also agricultural and forest sciences down here. The graduate school, also has a doctoral course, which the major is science and engineering, and you have engineering for innovation. And then it's a more or less the same courses, but you're studying in much more detail um, for science and engineering and the science of a natural environment systems course. So entrance into Shimani University. How do you get into Shimani University? So um, for students uh, who want to study in Japanese, you will need the EJU um, and you will not need a TOEFL score. If you want to study in Japanese, in study in English in, at an undergraduate level, your only option is the, your best option and only option is the bilingual education course for international students at the introduction interdisciplinary faculty of science and engineering. So for that, you will need the EJU, you will need a TOEFL or IELTS, and you will need a JLPT score of N4 or higher. For graduate students or doctoral students, what I suggest is um, there's no sort of interview process or anything like that. But what you do is you contact a professor um, and you get a professor to sponsor your research. So there is, um, if you scan the QR code here, and I apologize, it's blocking some of the text. The top um, is master's and the bottom is doctorate, but this QR code will go to um, both of these undergraduate and graduate <clears throat> facility courses uh, pages for um, enrollment information. But uh, definitely, definitely very important is to contact your professor a professor who will sponsor your research and to be very careful about preparing your field of study and research plan. So again, uh, EJU uh, is required for international students for undergraduate only, not for graduate. Um, and then we have the three faculties here that I have been talking about. Um, if you want to study in Japanese, 
Um, and then for graduate courses here, uh, the first graduate course, Human Sciences, uh, is Japanese only. Um, and again, as we've been talking about the Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology and the Graduate School of Medical Research for your master's and doctorate, those can be taken in English. Um, here's just like a small, very, very simple calendar of the EJU test, which I'm sure many of you have already looked up. But the EJU applications open in February and the deadline usually ends in March. Japanese academic year starts in April. And um, usually the MEX scholarships will open at your consulate or embassy in April as well. So um, in July, we we have uh, we release our documents for uh, that. Shimane University uh, applications online for undergraduate students. So very, very soon, um, they're not up quite yet. So if you look at the, just keep checking the links, um, but they will be updated soon. So just like a very sort of very small, very simple schedule. Uh, a lot of people have questions about tuition and admission. Fees, all national universities generally have the same admission fee and tuition fee. Um, at Shimani University, unlike the previous university who uh, pre presented, uh, you do have to pay the admission fee. It's just a one-time payment um, written here on the screen. And tuition also is um, this amount for about 535,000 uh, per year, Japanese yen. Um, as for sort of scholarships or some sort of financial aid for graduate students only, uh, for privately financed students, which means you don't already have a scholarship, you can get a full or half exemption on your tuition fee. So international students at university, what does that look like? So we have, uh, as of, we have about 200, a little over 200 international students. Most of them come from China um, and a good majority come from Bangladesh. Um, many of them are study at the Graduate School of Natural Science and, Te Natural Science and Technology. Um, but again, we have a smattering of different countries. Um, Nepal, we have somebody from Sri Lanka as well, Afghanistan, um, many different countries. So um, let me talk a little bit about scholarships. Um, so again, everyone has been talking about the MEX scholarship. So I believe you guys have that down. Um, there's a JASO scholarship as well. And then just to throw in so that you all know that Shimane University works with private companies and uh, organizations within Shimane Prefecture. Um, we do have other scholar private scholarships that we will message students about throughout the year. Um, so that they are they are able to get um, a better sort of cushioned income. Uh, if you guys want to take a look at this later, and um, I can, or you can just write it down. I believe the study in Japan JASO link may have already been put in the chat, um, and also the website study Japan Study Support is very useful for finding um, different uh, different scholarships to apply to. Um, I'm going to skip this slide for now. So student lodging. Many students worry about um, sort of where they're going to stay, but we do have a dormitory for uh, international students and Japanese students. So you live together and it's sort of a shared facility. So we have three different buildings. Um, and they all come with varying different prices, depending on whether the bathroom and the kitchen are shared or if they're not shared <clears throat> or if you have your own. So, but you can get as cheap as 4,000 yen a month for, and that, that would mean that you have a shared room and then a shared kitchen and bathroom. But 4,000 yen is really hard to beat, <laughs> like talking city prices versus prices out in um, the countryside. Uh, definitely in the countryside, you can save a lot of money by studying there. Um, if you get a private apartment, it's about 15,000 yen for a shared apartment, like a 
share house kind of living situation. Um, and for a one room type, it's about 25,000 Japanese yen. Um, and the school will be your guarantor. So when you come to Japan, you need a guarantor to sign for your apartment to say that you aren't going to, to promise that you are going to pay your rent. And so many times this is a problem for international students, but the university will be your guarantor. A little bit about student life. I know I don't have a lot of time left, but I um, just want to go through that we do have a tutor support system. So the first six months of your studies at Shimano University, you will get a Japanese tutor who will help you with daily life, study Japanese language support, um, take you to get your uh, registration, your re residence registration done, take you to the bank, help you get your cell phone bills um, done, help you with Japanese studies. The first six months, they're there to help and support you. And again, um, I know many people have asked about Japanese language uh, classes. So Shimani University doesn't necessarily offer a Japanese class major, but for students who do study at Shimani University, undergraduates will receive credit for, for their uh, Japanese classes. Um, graduates will not, but the classes are open to everyone. Um, there's a beginner class and an intermediate Japanese class. And there's also classes specifically to pass the JLPT exam. Also, we have international student field trips. Um, obviously, because of Corona, we haven't been able to have these field trips uh, since 2019. But these are some pictures from earlier years um, where we get international students and Japanese students together. Um, the ski tour is in a neighboring prefecture where we go skiing um, with maybe uh, 20, 30 students and stay the night. And the Onan trip is a place where you get to actually experience the countryside of Japan and then stay with an old couple and live the life of a Japanese family. So it's very, uh, many students enjoy this trip very much. So um, again, if you would like to contact us, I will put it, this email in the link uh, in the chat box afterward. Um, but these are QR codes to the um, undergraduate and graduate entrance link and the graduate school applications in English and Japanese. So uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Professor um, Simpson, for the detailed presentation. Now we'll start the five minute Q&A session. Um, are there any questions you would like to answer in the Q&A box? Um, if it's all right with you, would you mind reading out some of the sure, questions? Not a problem, not a problem. Thank you. Um, are there uh, courses based on cyber security and cyber law? In Japanese or? In English. In English, no, we don't, unfortunately, not in English. Um, are there humanities, um, are there courses in humanities? There are courses in humanities. Um, if you have a Japanese level of JLPT N2 or higher, then you can study in the humanities department. Um, uh, human sciences, that sort of thing in at the undergraduate level or graduate level, but you need to have, um, Japanese language ability to study in this in this field. All right. Um, are there graduate programs in mechanical engineering or civil engineering? Yes. So um, at the sorry at the Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology. Um, I'm sorry, I went through that slide very quickly. But there's a mat. We have masters and doctoral courses, and we have. Um, mechanical, electrical, and electronic engineering uh, courses, and that would be under the science and engineering major. Okay, um, th does it also include uh, information technology, computer uh, sciences? Yeah, so it says uh, we have, it's not necessarily titled computer sciences, but that's essentially what it is. Our title is information systems design and data science, um, but that's essentially computer science. Yeah. Um, I suppose there aren't any medical courses available, are there? 
There are medical courses available at our medical campus. Um, you would have to be a graduate student to be able to join. Um, um, so uh, there aren't uh, any medical courses for undergraduate? For undergraduate, we only offer them in Japanese. Um, and your Japanese level has to be native or near native. Um, so N1 is sometimes not even enough. So um, unfortunately, international students can only enter at the graduate level. Um, how about master's uh, graduate programs in business? We do not have graduate programs in business, unfortunately. Um, is there any question you uh, would like to answer from the q and box? Let me take a look. I mean, yeah. I know that we're at time right now. Um, psychology, we only have that in Japanese, um, unfortunately. Um, is admission for October taken now um, for the graduate school? School of Natural Science and Technology. Um, we in, I believe it's in the end of this year that we would take courses or accept applications. Uh, but there is, especially for that graduate school, April admission and October admission. So there are two different times that you can enter for the master's course. We take, we can take two more questions. Okay. Um, could I? Uh... You can choose if you'd like. Right. Okay. Um, is TOEFL certification compulsory? TOEFL, if your native language isn't English, then um, it is compulsory if you're taking any courses in English. If you're taking courses purely in Japanese, then you do not need TOEFL. Um, I guess most of the students uh, have done their education in English. So if they've completed 12 years of education in English, um, are they required to submit their um, TOEFL course? Um, I would have to double check on that. My guess is no, but especially if you can complete it up to 12 years or, or more of uh, education in English language. So um, my guess is no, but I think it depends on the faculty that you're applying to. Okay. Um, one last question. Um, are there graduate programs in molecular biology or genetic engineering? In molecular bi biology and genetic engineering, yes. Um, it depends on the professor that you find. So if you can find an English speaking professor in the School of Natural Science and Technology, then definitely I would go for it. Um, that would be for graduates, uh, for master's program or doctorate. Um, but there, there's, and there are also courses in Japanese. So it's all about finding your professor. Um, thank you so much for answering the questions. Um, it would be great if you could share a few links um, in the chat box for the students uh, to look at uh, the links. Okay. Um, what kind of links would you like? I uh, sent um, um, an email address that they can ask okay, more I guess questions that, that's to. Helpful. Yeah. Just because we're running out of time, I know. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so this marks the end of our webinar. Thank you to all the panelists and attendees for participating in today's webinar. The recordings of the webinars conducted earlier are uploaded to the UTOKYO India office site and the link is shared in the chat box. So please have a look at it. Please feel free to contact the universities personally for additional information. And once again, thank you for attending the webinar and we hope to see you in the coming webinars. Thank you. Thank you very much.